Welcome to the March 2014 Project of the Month. This month we are going to do butterflies, butterflies, and more butterflies. We're also going to be using colored crystal lacquer and coloring with Tombow watercolor markers. Um, I'm going to be moving kind of quickly because some of these projects are a little more involved. And the first one we're going to start off with has all sorts of fun stuff. Bouncing butterflies, crystal lacquered butterflies, dimensional flowers, a nice carved basket, and then you just sort of piece it all together. So I'll move that one out of the way for the moment. First stamp we're going to start with is this big carved basket, and I already stamped one just so I don't have to pound the daylights out of the table. And I'm going to color it with the Tombow watercolor markers. You always start off light to dark. Hopefully you can see this. I'm just going to color very quickly. And I'm using a 942 light brown. And I'm not worrying about covering every little part of the basket. Basically I got a nice base to it. I'm going to leave the lid off that one and grab it's a 977. It's a darker brown. And what I'm going to do is pretend that my light brown is a, is a paintbrush and the dark brown is the paint. And this doesn't hurt your marker tip at all. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dark with the light marker. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep doing it until I get the basket shaded. This gives you that watercolor look where it's blended together. Felt the harsh lines where if you did that with the dark brown over the top, you'd have a harsh line. Keep doing that. Get it as filled in as you want. And if you want, you can add some khaki to it or some gray, depending on how weathered you want your basket to look. go back in, put the light brown down, and then touch up with your dark brown for a little bit of shadow. Always use the dark very sparingly. And I'm going to grab a little bit in there. So there's my basket. Now to create my card, set these aside, always make sure you get the right lids on the right markers or check before you use them again. But I'm going to take and cut this out rather than stamp it on my card and try to get everything masked into it. Just cut it out around it. And for the sake of saving time, I already have one all cut out. So there's my basket grab another sheet of cardstock so I would glue this on here but we're gonna put some flowers in it first and the ones I'm gonna use are these little popcorn roses here's one I lost it and I'm gonna color these groups are finished I stamped the leaves right with them and then I cut them out just to so I didn't have so many little pieces parts but I do want to have a few loose ones so on this single one I colored it a soft pink right here and then I'm going to go back in same thing that I did with the basket the dark pink so my light pinks my paint brush my dark pinks my paint and I'm going to go in and build up the color again I'm not worrying too much if I don't get everything colored or covered so when you watercolor, you get pools and puddles of color, white space. It's all part of the look of watercolor. Go back in with my dark pink and hit the centers to pop it a little bit. Those aside as well. And then I have a few single leaves. I'm going to go in with a nice sort of celery green kind of color, moss green. The celery's a little bit lighter color those. I'm going to grab a soft blue because everything has more than one color. So 
here's a soft blue. And then I'm going to grab kind of a limey green just to pop them a little bit. There's my leaves. And then I would take and just cut this one out. I'm going to do this quickly. Obviously, if I was doing this for the finished card, I would take a little more time and get close in the lines. And around it. Okay, got my rose. And then I'm going to do the same thing with some of the leaves. And just cut those out. for now. Okay, then I have my flowers in my basket and leaves. I'm going to set those aside because the next thing we need to do on the card is stamp our butterfly. And I'm going to use a quick drying pad for watercolors so I can go over it and the line's not going to bleed. And what I would do is just stamp a bunch of these. I would use about five on the card. You always want to use odd numbers, not twos and fours, but threes and fives. And then I'm going to use the colored crystal lacquer, which is this product right here. I keep it upside down in a cup with a damp paper towel. Well, actually, no, I don't with the colored. But I keep it upside down in a cup because it keeps the air trapped at the top of the tube. There's not so many air bubbles from flipping it back and forth all the time. To use it, it's kind of like a liquid crayon. You just take your butterfly which doesn't have any color on it. Take a yellow lacquer and just fill in the wings. Put a nice coat of yellow lacquer. And while the yellow lacquer is wet, I'm going to take this sort of soft orange color and just drop it right in there and it'll bleed right into the wings. And color it. Now I would let this set up for about 20 minutes before I tried to put the body in because if I tried to put like a little blue or green body it would bleed out into the wings. Um, how long it takes to dry depends on how thick you apply it anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour plus depending. I'll do another butterfly. Here's a pink one. And no, no color underneath colored lacquer. All right. I'm going to take, let's see, a softer purple. And sometimes this one you need to swirl it around to work it in a, a little bit to get the colors to blend in together. Now you just leave those air dry. Don't take a hair dryer or heat gun or anything to try to dry them. They will splatter out. But just leave it air dry flat somewhere. Set those aside. And the butterflies do take probably about an hour to dry. So I have some already dry. And when they're dry, they almost look exactly the same as they do when they're wet. So you want to be careful because if you stuck your finger in one when it's wet, you're going to have a lacquered finger. And I'm just going to take and cut one of these out. All right. I'm not going to worry too much about the antenna. Oop, and if you hear a little sound, there's a little girl upstairs that just started crying. cut off. If you wanted you could take wire and add antennas back in but I'm not going to worry about that. What we're going to do to make the butterflies bounce is put wire on them. So I just have a spool of wire. Get wire from your local hardware store if you want. And to get the wire on the back 
I'm going to take and just roll up a little swirl of it. I got a little swirl of wire. You can see that too well, but I'm going to take and put it on the back of my butterfly. And then I'm going to take some lacquer and put a little blob on there and just let it dry and that will hold it. I'll set that aside, but that will hold it on there. And when it's dry, you have little butterflies that are lacquered nice and tight to the wire so they're not going to come off. But for this card, I have about four lacquered butterflies, four or five, and then some loose ones. And then I'm going to take and assemble the whole card. Slide our butterflies off to the side. We will grab a sheet of cardstock. I'm actually going to cut the wet butterflies off this sheet. Okay, set those aside again. Okay, so here's my cardstock. <coughs> and I'm going to take my basket, and before I glue it down, I want one of the flowers to look like it's down inside the basket. So I'm just going to basically glue it inside the basket, right to the back of it. Take a very fancy tool as a glue stick, put a little glue on it, and glue it right to the back of the basket. Then I'm going to take and coat the whole basket with a good thick layer of glue stick. Get a nice thick layer on there. Make sure I discard my sticky piece of paper. Get a fresh one back to my cardstick stock and glue my basket down. So there's my basket with one flower in it. Now the other flowers you can take if you have some double stick mounting tape. There's my flower. Just gonna cut a little of this or you can just glue it on or use pop dots or whatever you happen to have. put as much on the back of this as you wanted. Get the back off of it. Okay. The, the nice part about doing it this way is I don't have to worry about goofing up when I'm masking or putting something in. I know I get it exactly where I want it. stick on the back of this one. You can turn it too. Decide one leaf is going the same direction as something else. I'm going to go back. I want this leaf to kind of look like it's behind the other flower. Get in. So basically, there's your flowers in your basket. Now, to put your butterflies so they look like they're popping off the basket, you need to take, I lost it for a moment, a fancy little tool of a push pin and poke some holes wherever you're going to put your butterflies. And you slide your butterflies through. Get them to the heights that you want. It's good to vary the heights. Oops, it doesn't have a wire. And then I'm going to 
flip my card over and take some of this double stick and just stick the wires down. You can cut these extras off if you want. Got my three butterflies up there. Take another one. yellow one dancing down there. Again, flip your card over. Stick it down. And there's your bouncing butterflies. And then you have some of these other loose little butterflies. I'm going to take some double stick. And put them behind back off. There we go. Let's see. Purple one there. And actually I'm not going to use that one because I have five butterflies right now. So we're going to get that. And then the last step is I'm going to take a soft gray marker and I would just go around the basket to create a soft shadow. I would go around the whole thing. And then when you're done, you take and you layer it. And you can see that you have your butterflies. It's all layered up and you have your butterflies in a basket. Let me set that aside. Set this out of the way. Move the crystal lacquer butterfly so I don't stick my hand in it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do has a little bit of dimension to it as well. Move the crystal lacquer is this card. Basically, there's just one stamp, but there's some beads. So I'm going to take my cardstock and the stamp is the bigger butterfly that we, the bigger version of the butterfly that we just used in the last card. And again, I'm going back to my black ink. And I'm going to stamp, let's see, two butterflies. One there, one there, and then I'm going to stamp an extra one over here. I have my butterflies. And then to color them, going back to my Tombow markers. And if you don't put the right lids on the right markers, you do what I just did and start with the wrong color. That's okay. Solve my problem. Color the wings a soft yellow. then I'll go back in and pick up a little of that dark orange, which is where I'll blend to that initial whoops coloring in. Colored it, going back, picking up darker orange. You can't even really see right now where I accidentally colored with the dark one. Got my yellow butterfly. And this time I'm going to make sure I put the right lids on the right markers. And I'm going to check these. Yep, that's the right lids. The soft sort of ice blue. Quickly coloring it in. And go back up the dark color. Go. go back and touch up the center sort of a little bit to make them pop. Go back and forth. And how your paper takes the color really depends on what paper you're using. Different papers will accept the colors differently, so you always want to play a little bit. And I have my single butterfly over here, all by its lonesome. Color that the soft pink, squeaky markers. And 
my soft pink. I'm going to go back in with my dark pink. Excuse me. And I'm going to take, just highlight the centers again. Right lids on the right markers. Gonna take pop some color on their bodies, take the soft gray, and go around the two that are over here. Already got those two butterflies done. butterfly out. Okay, we'll go this is probably the hardest part of this whole project is cutting the butterfly out. time I am going to keep a little bit of the wing, I mean the wing, the antenna. So I'm going to cut down next to the wing and then cut down next to the antenna. Pull that out. Okay. You don't have to keep the antenna just this time. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my white sticky getting those on there. And just a little bit for the antennas because you don't want them just floating out there then they can get ripped off easily. Okay, so for the part of the sticky that's sticking past, just cut that little bit off. Alright, I'm going to peel this off of here, which is not as easy as it looks sometimes. Where tweezers can come in handy. Okay, cut that. One more. And I'm going to stick this one down. Let's see. Look we'll like that. Okay, so I have my three little butterflies. Do is take and cut three pieces of wire. And make them decent enough length so you have a little bit to work with. And I have some glass beads. And I'm just going to thread the beads, about six of them on a wire. Oops get them to stop rolling around. Two, three, four, five, six. So I have a little string of beads on the wire. And then I would take, poke a hole at the top of the butterfly between the antenna. I want it at the bottom. String 
beads through and through the top and sort of flatten them a little bit flip the card over and again stick it down smush it down a little bit we have a beaded butterfly body and you do that for all three of them and then mount it and there's a pretty dimensional card look at the side you can kind of see there they can hear it too they're beaded so that's butterfly project number two my beads and my tool there is known as a push pin set that card aside the next one is a little bit of masking Again, another butterfly. There's our card. Got my heart already stamped on my cardstock. And then I stamped it on a, just a sheet of typing paper. And take, fold it over, cut the center out to create a mask. my mask and I'm going to cover up my heart that I already stamped on the cardstock <clears throat> and I'm going to take this little sort of loose butterfly and my black ink and I'm just going to stamp some butterflies on here and unwanted portions of my butterfly are actually on my heart the mask rather than on my cardstock so my butterflies look like they're inside the heart. And then what I'm going to do next is kind of fun. I'm going to take a little butterfly stubby stamp and just two different colors of purple ink and I'm going to take it and instead of just stamping a butterfly and calling it good, I'm going to take it and stamp it multiple times, turning it each time so I get a flower. And then I'm going to make it stand out a little bit more. I'm using a light purple first, and I'm going to switch to a darker purple. And then I have some little flowers on there. And I, what I should have done first, get that off, is stamp an extra one. Or two up here. Go back in with my dark purple ink again. There's my flowers. And before I put the whole thing together, again, I'm going to color my butterflies. I'm using the yellow markers again and I made sure I checked before I colored them. There's my little yellowish butterfly. Again, the light color is the paintbrush, the dark color is the paint. pinks. My darker pink. Touch up the centers with a little bit of dark. And the last I'll add the gray. I was going to add the gray, but I'll do it at the very end because the next thing I want to do, I have a hunter green ink and a little stubby double leaf, carved leaf. And I'm going to take and stamp some carved leaves around my flowers. Got that. And then I'm going to take 
take my gray marker and just go around it. And you may be wondering about these two little flowers up here. I'll show you those in just a second. <laughs> 